Hello everyone, welcome to This Family Does Everything. My name is Alexandria. This is the testimony of Daniel Ryder. And what is interesting is how Daryl Brooks treats this man who let him use his phone to call his Uber, gave him a jacket, made him a sandwich, even offered him slippers. The way he treats him is just, it's very mind-boggling to me. But I'm not going to waste a lot of time discussing it. Let's sit back, watch, and analyze the Daryl Brooks trial. First thing I will ask you to do is to state and spell your first and last names for the record. Daniel Ryder, D-A-N-I-E-L-R-I-D-E-R. Thank you. Go ahead, your witness. Thank you. Uh, Sir, do you live in the city of Waukesha? I do. Where were you living back on November 21st of 2021? 553 Elizabeth Street. Were you living there, um, excuse me, were you home there that afternoon and early evening, that Sunday afternoon? I was. Was anybody else home with you? No. Can you describe what that residence looks like? Is it a single family house, multi-unit, what, what's it look like? The yeah, it's a... Uh, um, overall, you may answer. Uh, it's a three, three or four bedroom house with two bathrooms. It's a Cape Cod style home, land in stone. Um, yeah, it's got a two and a half car garage. Okay. Do you know what Aries Industries is? Yeah. Where is Aries Industries in relation to the house you're describing? Objection leading. Overruled. Witness may answer. Yeah, Aries is right across the street from my house. That afternoon, November 21st, were you aware <coughs> that the Waukesha Christmas Parade was taking place? Yes, I, I was aware of the parade. Did you attend the parade? No. Did you watch the Packer game? Uh, I did watch the Packer game earlier that day, but I was watching the um, Chiefs Cowboys game that uh, that evening. Okay. That I think it was afternoon. I don't know exactly what time it was, but do you recall what happened at approximately five o'clock p.m. that day? Objection, leading. Overruled. Can I answer? Yeah. So earlier that day, I was in my hometown Prairie du Chien for deer season, and then I drove back to Waukesha. Um, I got home in Waukesha, my home in Waukesha around 4 o'clock and I was watching the game and then uh, about 5 o'clock my ring doorbell goes off uh, and then there's a gentleman at my front porch knocking on the door saying that they're homeless, they're cold and they need to use my phone so that they can tell their Uber where to pick them up. What did that gentleman look like? Uh, he was a African American. Um, he had long hair and a beard. Um, Do you remember what he was wearing? Yeah, he had a uh, like a red t-shirt, reddish orange t-shirt, and no shoes on, pants. Um, but I remember it stood out to me because it was cold and really windy that day, and he was outside with with a t-shirt and no shoes and saying he's really cold. So that stood out. You mentioned a few moments ago your ring doorbell. Is that a device affixed to your exterior uh, door frame? Objection, Lee. Overruled. Uh, it's it's fixed to my, the outside of my porch, so not quite on the on the door, but just next door to the door. Yeah. It's, okay. And does that capture video? Objection, yeah. Leading. Overruled. Yes. What about audio? Yes. Objection, Leading. Overruled. Did your Ring video doorbell? capture the video and audio of your initial interaction with that gentleman on the afternoon of November 21st. Objection leading. The ring doorbell, when it senses motion, it takes a 20 second snippet. And the 20 seconds that I got from the initial interaction was just um, the suspect coming up to my house and knocking on the door and saying he's homeless and needs help. I didn't get the verbal interaction that I had with him on, cam on the ring doorbell because it only filmed 20 seconds. After the fact, so later that evening, did you speak with law enforcement? Yes. And did you subsequently at some point provide that 20 second ring video doorbell clip to a law enforcement officer? Yes. Did and you edit it in any way before sending it? Objection. No. Leading. No, and, and there was uh, four or five different snippets, not just the one 20 second snippet. So there was one, the initial interaction of him coming to the door, and then there was another one of him leaving and then an interaction there and then uh, the, the police coming to the door and him asking to come back inside the house when I wouldn't let him in. So there's there's four clips that I submitted, four or five that I submitted to the police. 
All right, let's work our way through those. Let's yeah. start, Your Honor. I'd ask that we please show exhibit number 75 for the witness only. Objection. Okay. Rather than see. Overruled. Do you see a video on the screen in front of you? I do. What are we looking at here? Joshua Lady. Overruled. Uh, this is Mr. Brooks coming up to my door. You said Mr. Brooks. Did you know his name at that time? Uh, not at the time, no. When did you learn that name? Uh, the officers were using it after the fact, so I don't know, about 5.30 or so that day. Okay. Uh, does this appear to accurately depict your front porch as it looked uh, as that subject walked up to your door? Yes. And this is the video you sent to law enforcement that night or sometime after that night? Yes. Move Exhibit 75 into evidence and ask to publish. Objection. Exhibit 75 has received permission to publish. Granted. Objection. It's noted. Overrule. As we're waiting for that to pop up in the uh, jury box on their screens, I'll ask you, Mr. Ryder, do you see a date and timestamp on the bottom right-hand corner of this video? Objection. Okay. Leading. Overrule. I do. Is that a timestamp that's a feature of Ring, or was that added after the fact? Objection. Overruled. Uh, it's a feature of Ring. I didn't add that, yeah. And to your knowledge, does that timestamp appear to be accurate? Objection. Overruled. Speculative. Yes, that is accurate. For the record, the objection was overruled. This is a 20 second clip. I'm going to ask that we play it once with audio. Hey, can I, I'm calling some, I'm calling an Uber, and I'm supposed to be waiting for it over here, but I don't know when it's coming, can you call it for me, please? I'm homeless, I'm... Can we pull that back up just to look at the timestamp one more time? Thank you, and just for those of us not the greatest eyesight. Would you mind reading that timestamp on the bottom right hand at the beginning of this exhibit? Objection leading. Overruled. Yeah, it says uh, November 21st, 2021, and the timestamp says 17.01, so 5.01 p.m. Okay. The voice we heard in that exhibit that we just played, whose voice is that? Objection leading. Overruled. Objection. You may answer, sir. Uh, it's... Mr. Brooks's voice? It's not yours. No. Okay. Uh, Your Honor, I'd ask that Mr. Brooks please be instructed to remove his face mask momentarily. Sir, would you please remove your face mask and face the witness? Was that a question of... The state's asked, there, sir, please remove your face mask and face the witness. I'm, just, I'm confused. He made a statement about voice. I, I don't, um, he, the question's been asked and answered. Please what, remove your mask. What was the question? Please remove your mask and face the witness. Mr. Ryder, do you see the person depicted in exhibit number 75 in the courtroom today? Yes. Can you identify him for us by telling us where he's sitting and what he's wearing? Uh, He's sitting at the table right there wearing a black suit and a gray striped tie. And as the record reflect that the witness has identified Mr. Brooks? The record will reflect that the witness has identified uh, the defendant as the person uh, depicted in this video and the person who was on his porch on November 21. Objection. I don't, I don't consent to being called that name for the record. Go ahead. Your next question, please. Thank you. What happened... Uh, in the moments after this video, the 20 seconds that were captured? Um, so he was on my porch for, I don't know exactly, a minute maybe, and he was telling me the interaction, or uh, he was telling me that he needed to use my phone to let his Uber know where to pick him up, and that he was homeless and cold, and um, he said he didn't have any weapons or anything on him, and he lifted his shirt real quick, and I was like, no, it's okay, you can use my phone, and um, I let him come inside and warm up, uh, I just 
tend to believe people and I'm from a small town and we had people that need help all the time because we live right off a highway so I'm used to you know doesn't didn't phase me too much I mean I was nervous for sure but I was like yeah I can let use my phone and he made it sound like the uber was gonna be here just any second just needed to know where to pick him up so I said yeah you can come and warm up while you wait for the uber and uh, I let him sit on the couch right by the window out front I said you can look out here waiting for your uber and he's on the phone most of the time after that with uh, his mom and uh, he's saying you know, the address 553 Elizabeth Street is where it needs to come and you know how far away is it kind of things like that but okay uh, I guess I, I guess is that what you're wondering or let me back up yeah. you made a motion with your hands there uh, regarding what Mr. Brooks said about not being armed. Can you, can you do that again, just for anybody who missed it? Objection. I don't know. Not to see if you call it that name. Go ahead. Again, for the record. Yeah, so I don't remember exactly what the motion was. I remember him saying he didn't have any weapons and he's um, not dangerous. And I think he lifted his shirt really quickly. But then I was like, ah, oh, don't worry. I'm not worried about that. And so I didn't. It's not like I patted him down or anything like that. But. Okay. Did you let him in the front door that would be right next to your video doorbell? That I actually... Oh. I can rephrase. Go ahead, rephrase. What door did you let Mr. Brooks into your home? I, I let him in the back door. I don't consent to being called that name. Overruled. Go ahead, you may answer. Yeah, the back door. Okay. So he went around the side of the house to get to the back door? That's right. Okay. What happened when he got to the back door? Um, I don't remember exactly. I remember letting him in. Well, I remember, so I just got back hunting, so I asked him to go through the back door so I could make sure I didn't have any weapons laying around. And so after that was good, then I let him in the back door. It's more just to give me a second to make sure nothing was tempting or anything. But I let him in the back door, uh, and I think I gave him a coat right away, and then gave him my phone, and then... Uh, told him where to sit down and when I told him to sit in the spot he didn't move or anything he stayed right there and listened to me what else did you give him I gave him a sandwich because he said he was homeless um, and I was I said oh I can get you some slippers to put on your feet to warm your feet up <laughs> I never did end up giving him slippers um, but yeah so I gave him a jacket to wear while he was at my house I gave him a spot to sit and wait for the uber and a sandwich you testified earlier that he was on the phone with his mom. How do you know that? Objection. Speculative. Overruled. Uh, a few reasons. I heard him say mama a lot, and his mother called me, or, and I didn't answer. But his mom called and left a voicemail after the fact, uh, confirming it. Whose phone was he using while he was inside your house? Objection. Mm. Relevancy. Overruled. He's using my personal cell phone. <coughs> How would you describe his demeanor? as he was inside your house. Objection leading. Overruled, you may answer. Um, I would say flustered, but also there were many times he was thanking me, and so he was grateful, and he even said, thank you so much for showing me love, man, and he was calling me bro, and so it wasn't, I guess that didn't make me feel like I was in any danger at the moment. Did Mr. Brooks leave your home at some point? Objection, I don't consider to be in court that night. Um, overruled. You may answer. Um, he, uh, I'm sorry, can you, I lost train of thought. Can you say it again? Did he leave your home at some point? Yeah, he, uh, left when I asked him to. So he was in my house for eight or nine minutes, and then, uh, I was standing on the front door looking outside, because I was getting a little nervous, because I thought the Uber would be there in a minute or two, not ten. And so, after eight or nine minutes, I'm looking around outside, and I see a police car drive by. And then I see another one coming down the street. And so I tell him, I say, hey, uh, I, we don't get a lot of police traffic on this street. And I'm getting nervous, and this is just too weird of a situation. You're fine to wait for your Uber, but you need to do it outside of my house. And he was a little bit like, oh, no, it's okay. Don't worry about it. Don't worry. And I said, no, you need to leave. And he, then he listened and got up. And uh, I've got video footage of that, of me escorting him outside of my house. He's still on the phone, and he's still got my jacket on. But I just said, you need to leave. Um, do, you, do you want me to say what I mean? Do you want me to keep going? Or? I just want you to answer my question. So. Okay, yeah. Uh, let's pause there, though. Sure. And show for the witness only, please, uh, exhibit number 77. We'll just 
Uh, we'll play a few seconds of this without any audio, and actually, to save time authenticating, Your Honor, I think we'll do this with <coughs> the remaining three videos okay. we have. Go ahead. So this so, is uh, 70... 77, yep. 77. All right, thank you. We'll play a few seconds, please, without... Yeah, yep, there we go. Okay, we played four seconds from Exhibit 77. Do you recognize that clip? I do. And what is that? Uh, it's Mr. Brooks walking out first with a jacket on and me in a long sleeve shirt, a gray shirt, walking out behind him. Can we show for the witness only, please, Exhibit 78? Go ahead. We'll play the first couple of seconds of this one, too. played the first eight seconds of that. Did you recognize that clip? Yes. What does that show? That shows Mr. Brooks after I had him leave and get my phone and jacket. He was outside and then him asking to come back inside because he said he left his ID inside my house. And that was on the audio, um, but it sounded like he had the audio off for that. And we'll show you 79 now without any audio as well, just for the witness. <coughs> Okay. We played eight seconds of Exhibit 79. Do you recognize that video? Yep. What does it show? Uh, it shows an officer on my porch after the suspect was put into cuffs asking if I knew who the suspect was. Are Exhibits 77, 78, and 79 accurate depictions of your porch that night? Jason. Yes. Overruled. His answer may stand. Move exhibits 77, 78, and 79 into evidence and ask to publish all three, please. Objection. <laughs> the objection is noted as to all three. It is overruled. Exhibits 77, 78, and 79 are received permission to publish. All three are granted. Okay, 77 is up now for everybody. It's a 21 second clip. We're going to play it once with audio, please. Before you do that, can we just confirm it's in the jury box? Not yet. Okay. <clears throat> Let me know. while we're waiting, we can make use of this time. Mr. Ryder, could you read the time and date stamp for us on the bottom right-hand corner? Objection, relevancy. Overruled. Go ahead. Yeah, it's November 21st, 2021, 17.10, uh, so 5.10 p.m. Okay, we've got it up for the jurors. Let's play this once with audio. Do you see yourself in that video? Yes. What are you wearing in the video? A gray shirt. A gray shirt. Did you hear the wind in that video? Yes. What do you recall being said in that portion of the video? Jesse Lee. Overruled. I'm walking Mr. Brooks outside of my house and my neighbor, Greg, says, are you guys looking for that guy? And I had no idea of anything at this point. And so I say, I don't know, this might be him. Um, you can hear that in the audio. I don't know if anybody was able to distinguish that, but that's what was said. And then um, Mr. Brooks says, no, no, no. And then I say, can I have my phone, please? And then after that, I say, can I have my jacket, please? Did he provide those items to you? He did. Okay. Can we put up uh, for the jury, please, Exhibit 78? <coughs> this is a 20-second clip. We will play it once uh, with audio, please. Why is he? Why is he? Mr. Ryder, what happened during that video clip? Objection leading. Mr. Brooks, or I should say the suspect, came to my door, asked to come back inside to look for his ID. 
I said, no, I'll look for it. You stay out there. Um, and I was looking underneath the couch and everywhere that he sat for his ID when I hear the, the police officers saying, put your hands up. And Did you the, ever find the, uh, that person's ID? No. Did that person leave anything else inside of your house? No. Flip-flops? No. Sweatshirt? No. Jason leading. Uh, so saying this to the form of the question, please rephrase that last question. What, if anything else, did that suspect leave in your house? I don't. Lady. Overruled. He may answer. I didn't find anything left in my house. Okay. Can we please uh, show for the jury <coughs> exhibit 79? <coughs> this is a 19 second clip. We will play it once, once with audio. <coughs> Hey, do you know this guy? Absolutely not. No. Okay. We paused at 18 seconds. That's the police officer you were talking about? Yeah. Okay. Can you just for the record, read for us the time and date stamp on the bottom right-hand corner here at the 18-second mark of exhibit number 79. Yeah, it's November 21st, 2021, and the time is 17:12:59 seconds, so 5:12 p.m. The video is a little bit blurry. Do you know where uh, Mr. Brooks is at this point? Objection, leading, and I do not consent to being called that name. Overruled. Objections noted. Uh, you may answer the question. Yeah, the suspect is on the east side of my walkway, on the northeast side of my house, in my yard. Um, if you see where those two police officer heads are, um, Mr. or the suspect is on the grass right there. That's all I have for this witness. Thank you. All right, any cross? Yes, one, just one second. Are you ready? Okay. Will you be needing any of those videos to put back up at any time? Uh, not that I can think of at the moment. Thank you. And before that, before that evening, you didn't know the guy that came to your house, correct? Correct. And so, why do you refer to why do you refer to him by name if you didn't know him? <laughs> because after the fact, the police officers and um, other people involved informed me of who the suspect was that was at my house that night. And it would be fair to say you got, uh, you captured, or your ring uh, captured quite a little bit of video. Would that be fair to say? Yeah. And did you turn over all the ring footage to law enforcement? I believe so. I mean, there was probably seven or eight other snippets of just officers coming in and out. I, I do believe I turned all that in, but nothing of evidence or anything. And were you aware that the ring footage was shown on social media platforms? I was aware, yes. Any idea how that came about? Objection. Grounds. Relevance. Um, Grounds. Overruled. He may answer. Uh, yeah, I released it. And 
you released it. What, what do you explain? What you mean by released it? Yeah, the news. Uh, the news wanted the footage, and um, I thought that this was good footage for this community and the victims to see some justice of the suspect put into cuffs. So I decided to release it. And. Were you, were you paid for that release? I was. So it would be fair to say that you profited off your ring footage? The incentive to release the footage was not to make money. And we, we donated a lot of money of the money we did see off of it. But yes, we did. We did. The money did make, or the video did make money. Do you recall how many uh, videos you released I believe it was four and you got paid for all four I don't know if it was paid for a per video basis or we we worked we were getting bombarded by the news so we did it we worked with the agent that then dealt with all the news people and we just got some off the back end so I don't exactly know how that works So would it be fair to say that you sold that footage? Yes. And you stated that you were um while having this interaction, you were you were a little nervous, Debbie, fair to say? Yes, sir. Did you feel like you were in any danger or just nervous? I never felt like I was in danger until I saw the police driving by. Then I did. But initially, your interaction, you didn't feel like you would be overtaken in any way? No, and the person at my door was very polite, so I didn't feel in danger. Um. And you uh, testify uh, to the to the effect that you had just arrived back home from hunting that that evening. That's correct. Well, not just arrived, but four o'clock probably got home by four fifteen. At that time, had you had you heard anything about what happened at the parade? No, I, all I knew was that there was a parade that day, but I had not heard of any incident happening at all. At any time during your, during your interaction with the suspect, did you notice any um, car keys? No. It's not to say he didn't have any on him, but I didn't notice any. You didn't notice any? That, nope. That'd be fair to say? Yep, that'd be fair to say. you notice any drug or alcohol? I didn't personally notice any drug or alcohol. I know there was some substance found on my porch after the fact, but I didn't, I didn't notice. I think maybe I smelled a little bit of weed or something, but nothing stood out too much. stated that you gave the suspect uh, a jacket and a sandwich? Yes, sir. And was that due to um, the suspect saying that they were homeless and, and cold, or did you just take the initiative to do that? 
Um, I don't remember the suspect asking for food, but I do remember them saying multiple times that they were homeless and cold and needed help. And so I took the initiative to try to help any way I could in the moment. <clears throat> the, yeah, I think I offered the jacket and the sandwich. I don't think they ever asked for either one. And you let them use your phone, correct? Yes. And how do you know for sure who they were talking to? Because the number that they had called called me back and left a voicemail saying that they were the mother of the person that just called. Um, she said something to the effect of, hi, my you just let my son use your phone. I'm calling back to figure out what's going on. And so that told me. And I did hear the suspect use mama when they were on the phone, too. Did you um, follow up with that voicemail? Uh, I did not. Oh. Grounds. Overruled. May I just clarify the basis was he didn't describe it as a voicemail? He did. He said he left. I thought he did, but yeah. anyway, the objection's overruled. Um, did you finish asking your question? You can, why don't you just ask it again? Um, did you uh, follow up with the caller that left the voicemail after that? I never called her back, no. She just left, called one time and left one voicemail. I did give the phone number to the police because they um, asked for it, so I gave them the number you had called and then told them about the voicemail calling me back. But I didn't release that to anybody else other than the police. Do you recall uh, keeping that, that phone number in your call log at, after that? I, I believe it's still in my voicemail history, if that's what you're wondering. Even even now? Even now, yeah. Any reason why you would keep it this long? Uh, it's just I didn't per go out of my way to keep it. It just is on there. I don't get a lot of voicemail, so I, I checked this morning just to make sure it was on there, and it still is on the bottom of my list. So why would you check for it this morning? Because I thought maybe it'd come up today. I don't. I don't remember the exact number, but I still have the voicemail if, if I needed to bring that up. What led you to believe that it may come up this morning? Because I knew I knew I had to testify, but I didn't know what what exactly would come up or not. What do you mean by you knew you had to testify? Is that? I got a subpoena and asked to come and share what happened at my house that day. And that was one of the things that happened. You seek, so you seek uh, testifying. Objection. Grounds. Um, sustain us to the form of the question. <clears throat> So you made reference to still keeping the voicemail. Did you uh, keep any of the ring footage? It's still on my phone, yes. Uh, you said it was like six or seven videos? I didn't keep anything past the officer coming up to my door after. Um, so I think I've got only four saved, maybe five. Any reason why you would keep those this long? just haven't felt the need to get rid of them, I guess. I mean, it's that video is protecting me, you know, from being involved or anything, so I, there's no reason I would ever get rid of it. Would it be fair to say that you weren't involved in anything that, that evening? Other than trying to help somebody who I thought was in need, I was not involved in anything that evening. So why would you have any fear that the, uh, you may be implicated in anything and if you know that you 
weren't involved in anything. Because I had a suspect who had just done horrendous things come to my house and automatically people are going to think that maybe I had something or I knew you or something and I didn't. And so this is just validating that you told me you were homeless and some then I was trying to help a stranger out when really sorry what's the question I mean, it would be fair to say that you you weren't arrested in any connection to any events that evening would that be fair to say that'd be fair to, I've never been arrested And so my question would be, why would you think that you would be implicated in any way? Objection. Grounds. Asked and answered. Next question. <clears throat> and how do you feel that the keeping of the videos would protect you from something that you don't need protection from? Objection. Grounds. Asked and answered. Sustained. Next question. I think I misspoke when I said that it was protecting me because it's not necessarily protecting me. It's just something I haven't got rid of yet. Do you recall an uh, interaction with uh, law enforcement by the name of Officer Luling? I do. Do you recall emailing him uh, portions of the uh, ring footage? Yes. Do you recall how many portions? Maybe four or five. I, I don't remember exactly how many. So, no, I can't recall that exactly how, how many I did. Do you recall if it was six? I don't recall. I'm assuming at some point that after escorting a suspect out of your house, you went back into your house? Yep. And what did you do from that point? When I escorted the suspect out and he gave me the jacket and the phone back, I went right inside, locked the door, and I don't remember exactly what I did. I think I stood in there and looked outside because I wanted to see whatever was going on, see either the suspect get into an Uber and leave or see um, the police get him in cuffs. And it was a matter of a minute later, you came, or the suspect came and was knocking on my door again to come back inside and look for the ID. When uh, when asking for your phone and your jacket back, did you was there any resistance on the part of the suspect, or did they just uh, maybe a few seconds to finish up their phone call, but they gave it back as soon as I asked for it. And you stated at one point going back in your house to look for the ID and wasn't able to find the ID? Yeah, the suspect 
came back after I escorted him out of my house, came back like about a minute later asking to come back inside and look for his ID. And I said, no, I'll look for it for you. So I was looking for his ID. I didn't let him back inside. And you didn't find any ID when you looked? No, I did not find any ID. Did you find anything unusual? No. After um, seeing uh, reports on the news and, and, and things of the like, did you come into any more information at that point? Objection. The grounds. Vague. Sustained us to the final <coughs> question. Did you learn anything from news reports that you didn't know that evening? Uh, yes. After the fact, I learned of the suspect's criminal. Well, That's, I guess. Sorry. I'm not going to go there. Okay. Um, I learned the name of the suspect at my house. I learned what that suspect was put into cuffs for at my house. And I, I learned what vehicle he drove and the details of the incident. Did you observe the suspect in a vehicle at any time? Uh, no. Did you notice any vehicles parked in the area that you hadn't seen before? No. You made reference to uh, briefly speaking with neighbors at that time? Yeah, uh, when I was escorting the suspect out of my house, the neighbors said, are you guys looking for that guy? And up to that point, I had not, I had no information of a person that he should be looking for. So I said, no, this might be him. Do you know what they were referring to at that at yeah. that moment? Yeah, my neighbor was at the parade, um, and he was talking about the person driving the vehicle through the parade. And you knew all that at that moment? No, I, I didn't learn about that until the police told me after the fact. Um, I, I didn't know what he was referring to when he said, are you guys looking for that guy? I didn't know anything about anything particular, but just that somebody's looking for a guy. And so then that's what led me to believe that the suspect so be, in my house may be the person. It would be fair to say at that time, at that moment, you didn't know what they were referring to. That would be fair to say, correct. Did you have any other uh, interactions with those neighbors that evening? Yes. Uh, they called me after I got done doing my reports with the police, and I explained to them why there was so much police presence at my house afterwards and that um, that the suspect was arrested at my house or at my front porch. And did they at any time uh, did they at any time say anything to you about seeing a vehicle or having knowledge of a vehicle at that time? Yeah, Greg, my next door neighbor, saw the red vehicle running over people. And he saw that he told you that he saw that? Yeah. He told me after I had, I don't know exactly what time, maybe 6.30 p.m. that night when I called him after the fact. After I knew what had happened, then Greg told me that he had seen what had happened. A lot of my neighbors were at the parade. Do you know if they gave any uh, reports to law enforcement at that time? I don't know that. The officers that arrested the suspect at your at your home that evening did did you see your neighbors speak with any of those law enforcement officers? I didn't see them. No, speak with them. No.
and you stated that they told you what they saw. Any reason why they wouldn't speak with law enforcement, seeing as how they were right there in the area? Objection. Grounds. Only for speculation. Sustained. So would it be safe to say you were pretty well informed that you would be testifying in this matter? Um, I didn't know. I knew that it was likely. I didn't know until I got the subpoena letter. And when did you receive that subpoena? I'm going to say September maybe, maybe end of August. And that was received by, it was sent by the district attorney's office? Yes. You recall the name? No. After receiving the subpoena, did you uh, follow up with the district attorney's office? Um, they said that they would be emailing me with more details and I waited until I got the initial email before I did any following up with the district attorney's office. And were those emails, were those emails uh, pertaining to testifying in this matter? Yes. Have you yourself filed any claims in this matter? Uh, no. Have you yourself seen or read any complaint in this matter? No. <laughs> Would you yourself can consider yourself an injured party in this matter? No. Are you aware of who the plaintiff is in this matter? Objection. Grounds. Relevance. <coughs> Sustained. Would it be fair to say that you've followed the reporting on this incident? Uh, initially, yeah, I watched the news and followed the reporting on it. Uh, initially? Well, like I I'm, haven't been following the trial, but I was following the initial reports back in November of last year. So pretty much right when the incident happened is what you followed? Correct. You know, the following week or so, or two weeks. You ever hear who the plaintiff was in this matter? Objection. Grounds. Relevance. Grounds. Sustained. Have you yourself ever had any interaction with the plaintiff? Objection. <laughs> Grounds. Relevance. Sus sustained. <laughs> Do you, are, do you even know if there's a plaintiff in this matter? Same Grounds. Sustained. Do you recall how much you sold the ring footage for? Objection. Grounds. <coughs> Relevance. Overruled. He may answer. I believe gross it was a little over 23,000, but after taxes and we donated a lot, so we, we saw a lot less than that afterwards. Would it be fair to say that's quite a, quite a nice profit? Objection. Grounds. It, it's Sustained us to the form of the question.
And would that be the price just for one uh, one of the ring footages or in total? All, all that you sold? That was the total. Yeah. The four. I, like I said, I don't know how that worked. We, that was just the kickbacks that we got from working with the... So, yeah, I guess all of it, all four footage that was distributed to the news. Do you recall which station that was? Which news station? I mean, I think it was, like, most of the NBC, ABC... So it was multiple. CBS. Yeah, I mean, I don't recall all of them. No, I don't exactly which ones it was. I don't know. So it'd be fair to say it was pretty much the all the standard news stations. Yeah. Do you recall if that included TMZ? Objection. Grounds. Um, sustained. You've made your point. You can move on. No further questions. Thank you. Any redirect? Please. Thank you. Mr. Ryder, do you have your phone on you right now? Overruled. He may answer. I don't. I gave it to a gal that let me in here. She's got it, though. While we're waiting on that, you yeah. mentioned uh, you checked your phone this morning to confirm that you still have the voicemail we've been talking about, right? Yes. Relevant. Yes. <coughs> ruled. You questioned him about it. It's proper. If we, I'm referring to, I'm referring to the use of the phone. What is the? We phone haven't gotten there yet, sir. You're premature. You may answer. You did check. Yeah, I did. If we were to provide your phone to you here today, do you think you'd be able to find that voicemail? Objection. Overruled. He may answer. Yes. Do you think you'd be able to play it on speakerphone for everybody to hear? Objection. What is the relevancy? Overruled. Yeah, I can do that. Uh, there's a way to also play it through the technology. Objection. What is the relevancy? Uh, could I have a bailiff, please? You can unplug it from the charger. It's, it's probably to the witness. Objection. What is the relevancy? It's relevant, sir. You cross examine him about it. Thank you. Yeah, I'll cross examine him about the question, Mr. not Brooks. Playing the phone. Please, I've made my ruling. So is that is that a judicial <laughs> determination? Huh. Go ahead. You may ask your next question, Attorney Wichell. Uh, please open up your phone and let me know when you find the voicemail. It's still pulling up right now. Sure. You followed instructions and turned your phone, on, phone off before you came into court. Objection. Overruled. He may answer. Leading. Yes, I turned the phone off before court. Okay. <clears throat> oh, yeah. which I presume while he's loading that you're not offering the voicemail for the truth of the matter asserted, but simply to substantiate that he received a call. Yes. The jury will be instructed in terms of what is said in that voicemail not to consider it for the truth of the matter asserted, but just simply to substantiate the voicemail was received. And part of that request, Judge, would be to include the time that the voicemail was left and the number from which it came. Okay, objection, what is the relevancy of that? Um, the objections noted, and you may ask the witness those questions. You might as well ask about the video studio. We'll get to those. How much longer do you have? With the five, five minutes. All well, right. I don't know how long this voicemail is. With that caveat. All right. Please continue. It's okay. Twenty-nine second voicemail. Okay. Can you tell us uh, what phone number that voicemail came from? 
objection, relevancy. Overruled, he may answer. The voicemail came from one, so plus one or whatever, so 414-610-2153. Can you tell us what time that voicemail came in? Yeah. Relevancy. Overruled, he may answer. 527 p.m. On November 21st. Of 2021? Of 2021. Objection leading. Overruled his answer may stand. And Your Honor, at this point I'd ask uh, to allow the witness to play that voicemail using speakerphone. And if that doesn't work great with the audio system, then we can try the, the plugging in option. Right, once again, the jury, again, will only consider this not for the truth of the matter, of what's asserted in that voicemail, uh, but simply to substantiate that it was received. Go ahead. Objection. Noted. Overruled. Yes, Mr. Ryder. I'm just, I don't know what's going on. I'm at work. I work at Trader. And my son, that was my son who used your phone. Oh, sorry. So I I'll restart it. I was using the wrong mic. Yes, Mr. Ryder. I'm just, I don't know what's going on. I'm at work. I work at Trader. And my son, that was my son who you let use your phone. And he's calling. I don't know what's going on. I'm just trying to see if he got the lift or what because the guy is in a white guy charger. I can apparently the lift driver switch cars and I didn't get the message. So I'm just trying to find out what the hell is going on. So I am just, just want someone to just call me and tell me something because I don't know. <clears throat> and then that's the end of the voicemail? Yes. And you didn't uh, contact the person who called you and left that voicemail after the fact, did you? Objection. Absent answer. Cross. Um, overruled. He may answer. No, I never, I never contacted her. Okay. The videos that we played in court today, those four videos, Exhibits 75, 77, 78, and 79, you turned all those videos over to the police, is that correct? Objection, Lee. Um, sustained us to the form of the question. To whom did you turn those four videos over? Uh, I emailed them to Officer, I believe it was Officer Lilling. There was a... Rebecca Carpenter of Eagle PD that wanted it, and I may have emailed it to somebody with West Dallas PD, uh, but for sure Waukesha Police Department all got it that night. So while you've got your phone in front of you, are you able to access your call log? Um, yeah, I should be. Overruled. Can you go back to November 21st of 2021? Okay. Um, can you see what number Mr. Brooks dialed that day using your phone? Objection leading. Overruled. Objection. I don't consent to being called that name. Um, so my call log didn't save back that far. My voicemails did, but my call log, I've made so many calls since then that it didn't, I didn't save that. I think that, I think the police definitely saved that number when they were at my house that night though. Do you recall if it was the same phone number that you received that voicemail from? Objection speculative. Um, overruled. You may answer. I don't recall for sure. No. Okay. The videos that you released to the media, did you release anything to the media that you didn't also provide to the police? Objection. Overruled. No, I, everything that was released to the media was already released to the police department. Did you alter those videos or the audio that goes with them in any way when you released them to the media? Objection. You're saying. Overruled. No, I never altered any of them. What about when you sent them to the police? Objection leading. Overruled. No, never altered them. Were you aware at the time that Ring is a, a subscription service? Objection leading. Overruled. Yes, we pay subscription for it. And there's a cloud account that goes with that, is that right? Objection leading. S um, sustained us to the form of the question. I think this is a pretty foundational question necessary well, to develop the testimony. You're probably right, and there is, can be. Some leading questions all are allowed, but just rephrase that one, please, and we'll go from there. Okay. Where do the videos go aside from your phone? Objection speculative. Oh, cool. Um, there, there's an app on my phone that I was able to save and download off the app onto my phone. So there might be, a, I'm pretty sure that there's a Ring Cloud, that Ring, the company Ring can probably access the footage, but I, I'm not... I was never 
notified that they have access to it or anything like that. If someone did want to access those videos through Ring, were you aware at the time that someone would have been able to double check and make sure that you didn't fudge with that video? Objection, Lee. Um, overruled if you're able to answer. Um, yeah, I mean, Ring could, if we needed to get Ring to validate that it's if, that it's correct, they would be able to do that. Okay. When Mr. Brooks first knocked on your door, were you planning to sell those videos? Objection. I don't consent to being called that name. Overruled. The witness may answer. Objection. Speculative. It's not speculative. Overruled. The witness may answer. Objection. Hearsay. It's not hearsay. Go ahead. Uh, no, I had, I had no idea what was going to happen after that. What about after you let him in the back door and gave him a sandwich and a jacket? Were you, was Objection. this all part of a plan at that point? Objection leading. Overruled, he may answer. No, there's no plan to, to get footage to sell or anything like that, no. You simply provided those videos to law enforcement and the media. Objection leading. Overruled. Yes, that's correct. Thank you, I don't have anything else. After the fact. All right. Thank you. Uh, you may step down. It's a little after 12, 12.09. Uh, we will take our uh, lunch break. Uh, we went a little bit longer, uh, so I'm going to take um, about a 90-minute lunch break uh, today. So all rise for the jury. We are in recess. I'll see everyone in about.